Well, a chaotic and violent scene in Anaheim, California, as police clash with protesters. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. What do we want? Justice. Justice. Do we want it? Yeah. Protesters hurled rocks and other objects at police clad in riot gear. Police resorting to shooting rubber bullets and using pepper spray on the crowds of protesters. Now, yesterday marked the fourth day of demonstrations. They sparked after police shot dead a man that was apparently unarmed. Now, some protesters believe it was racially motivated and is just one example of a corrupt police force in Anaheim. For more now, Scott Shackford, editor of Reason.com, joins us now. Welcome, Scott. So things are heating up in Anaheim. Do you think this outrage will lead to real change? Uh, you'll have to keep an eye on what's going on with Anaheim City Council. Uh, they had a meeting last night which was taking place while this police action was going on. And from what uh, the news report said the following day, today, uh, the city council does appear to be treating it seriously. They're asking the federal government to come in and investigate the two police shootings they've just had. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, d does it look like, I know a lot of members of the community are, are calling for the, the feds to get involved. Does it look like, what is the likelihood of that happening? Uh, we'll have to see. I think the likelihood is, is fairly high, especially if the city council is supporting the action and they appear to be. So that's sending a message, essentially, that the city council is not necessarily behind the police's description of what happened. Right now, the police union has come forward and is defending the shooting, claiming that the gentleman who was running, running, away, running away, who was unarmed, the officer believed that he had something in his belt, but there was no weapon found. And, and that it doesn't appear right now that, the, that, it, that it's believed by the city council or by the mayor. Right, and that kind of is the, the center point of this argument, why people are so outraged, the fact that this man was not armed. Uh, and that has stirred protests, hundreds of people taking to the streets protesting this. Um, and there is reports that violence is occurring on both sides, um, with demonstrators hurling things at police, police firing back with rubber bullets and, and with pepper spray. But, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that this really, um, at times, brutal crackdown on the demonstrations uh, were justified? Well, I was actually, last night, I spent most of the evening watching um, an independent reporter's live feed of the protests and the police, and he was on the police side. Unfortunately, I could not see uh, much of the, the protesters, but we did see the police behavior, and the police did appear to be just shooting indiscriminately at, uh, pe at protesters, at people on the street. The reporter himself was shot at. Uh, on more than one occasion, despite having a press pass and, and identifying himself as a reporter. Uh, but protesters did uh, destroy some, some storefronts, thro throw things through glass windows. So it, it was definitely two-sided. Now, what I also don't know is whether the violence from the protesters really happened before the police started shooting or after. All right. Um, and so this is kind of, th this incident has kind of ignited this whole debate. To your knowledge, is this an isolated incident or is this kind of the culmination of a systematic problem within the police force in Anaheim? Well, they have had five deadly shootings so far this year, which is more than last year. So, so there's, a tr there's an upward trend going on with the Anaheim police as far as using force, and in the Los Angeles area as a whole. Even though um, we are seeing less violence against police officers, we are seeing greater instances of shootings by police officers uh, this year. And it's, it's definitely a trend um, that's slowly increasing. All right, and it's a trend, I guess, that people are taking notice of. Scott, I do want to bring attention to uh, something that's happening in Texas. The mainstream media has finally caught on to Anaheim in, in the fourth day of protest, but so, some are wondering where they were on day one. Uh, you know, now, but now there's similar outrage in Dallas. Hundreds of protesters there taking to the streets. This was after an officer was shot and killed. Um, shot and killed a suspect that reportedly was unarmed. So it's happening 
in more place than one. I mean, what do you think is going on here? It doesn't seem, I mean, when, when we see more than one instance, not just within Anaheim, but in other states across the country, I mean, is this systematic throughout our police force uh, in the U.S.? Um, it's, a, it's a difficult question to answer, as, as we discuss a lot. Uh, one of the things that we're discovering now, as, as we are more and more capable of recording police behavior, we're seeing more and more what the police have been doing. And we don't really know how long they've been getting away with certain types of behavior. It's only now, as citizens are more and more capable of showing us what the police are actually doing, which is different from what shows up on the official police reports, that we really understand the nature of the problem. So it may be... And maybe we'll, we'll never know how bad it used to be. And all we could do is judge as we move forward how accurate police are in reporting what actually happens. Now, a lot of this is a story, as you just hinted at, because, because a lot of it was caught on camera. And so do you think because of this, this trend, you know, everybody now, almost everybody carries a phone with a camera on it, that uh, police will start to be held more accountable for their actions? Uh, that is the hope. It is a little bit challenging because, um, as is in this case so far, police unions are very quick to line up behind their officers and defend their officers. And uh, whenever discipline comes down on police officers, it often gets overruled. It can be very, very difficult to get rid of a police officer who's performing poorly unless he or she ends up being arrested for a crime. So there will have to be some reform in policies on how we deal with police discipline for there to be some long-term behavior. But I think the recording of police will lead and force this change. All right, Scott, I'm going to have to leave it off out there, but appreciate you coming on the show. That was Scott Shackford. He is the editor for Reason.com.